Right, welcome to stress lesson four, which is sources of stress daily hassles. Now, we've just looked at life changes as a source of stress, and you came across the researcher Richard Lazarus, um, who is a big stress researcher and somebody you'll come across quite a lot. This is Richard Lazarus here on the left-hand side of the screen. Now, in around 1980, him and his colleagues started to question whether stress was best characterized by the big life changes that, by definition, happened to us only infrequently and often fairly unpredictably. So they started to suggest that actually daily hassles instead could give us a better understanding of how stress can make us ill. Now, Daily hassles are those frequent and everyday irritations and frustrations that seem to get on top of us sometimes, even though we try our hardest not to let them. So things like um, getting stuck in traffic, for example. You know, So daily hassles range from uh, minor and very trivial inconveniences to greater pressures and difficulties, even though they don't actually approach the significance of a major life change. Um, so like I just said, you know, getting stuck in traffic, having an argument with somebody or worrying about an argument that you may have had, uh, losing your keys, you know, having too much to do and not enough time, uh, having a really full day and then realizing that you've got to go and do the shopping because it's actually your time to cook. And then once you've done the shopping and you've got home and you preparing to cook and then you realize that the dishwasher's broken or the washing machine's broken and you need to get somebody in to uh, to, f to get that fixed. Now, nothing major has actually happened. If you took every single one of those things by itself, it would be fine. Be a bit of an irritation, but that's kind of it. Um, but if you add the effects of all of those hassles together, they leave us feeling very, very stressed. Okay, so the reason that is, is well, there are two reasons why that is, and it depends kind of on what daily hassles you are experiencing and how often you're experiencing them. So one explanation for the effect of daily hassles on our psychological well-being is that the accumulation of minor daily stresses actually creates persistent irritations and frustrations and overloads um, in our psychological system. And these overloads then result in more serious stress reactions, such as anxiety, depression, um, or physical illness as well. So that was, again, Lazarus in 1990 who suggested that. You've also got this idea of amplification as well. And that's the idea that chronic stress due to major life changes might actually make people more vulnerable to daily hassles. So for example, a husband trying to come to terms with a recent divorce may find that his children having a little squabble, which is a minor irritation, um, but he might actually perceive that as a major irritation. And then as a result, um, he may experience higher than expected levels of distress given the relatively trivial nature of the irritation. Now, as the person is already in a state of distress, the presence of associated minor stresses may then amplify the experience of stress. Okay, so those little things that we're going to experience, the minor squabbling, the losing your keys or whatever, that might um, be amplified um, by bigger events that are happening in your life, bigger life changes that are currently happening, which might mean that the trivial things will get turned up to 11. Um, the presence of a major life change could also deplete a person's resources. So psychological and physical resources. So that person might also be less able to cope with minor stresses than they would be able to under normal circumstances. So again, that is something that can grind you down and that can get to you um, over time. So if we just stick with the whole life changes versus daily hassles then and how they each impact our health and you know illness and that kind of thing. Um, Life changes exert their effect on well-being through daily hassles. Okay, so that's kind of the big difference between the two, according to the researchers. So major changes such as divorce or serious illness severely disrupt the normal everyday routines that we're used to. So if we use illness, for example, 
Having been ill, it can be a struggle to get back to the usual way of doing things. Everything can seem or can actually be more difficult and the little things that you used to take for granted and would cause you no problems whatsoever are now problems. They are literally hassles. So life changes have indirect effects on our levels of stress. Okay, they're what's known as distal sources of stress. However, daily hassles, on the other hand, are what's known as proximal sources of stress because their effects are direct and their effects are immediate. Okay, so that's that's kind of the big difference between the two and how they get to us and why they get to us. Okay, so I've got a key study for you now that looks into the effects of daily hassles uh, on our psychological well-being and our physical well-being as well. The key study was done by Kanna et al. in 1981, and this is what they did. Okay, so they had 100 participants, 48 men and 52 women. They were aged 45 to 67, and each participant completed two different questionnaires. They completed the hassles and uplift scale, which you can see an example of on the left there at the top. And the hassles and uplift scale is a lot like the social readjustment rating scale, except that it is all about daily hassles rather than life changes. So each participant completed the hassles and uplift scale uh, for events over the previous months, and then they continued to complete the hassles and uplift scale once a month for nine months. Participants also completed a life event scale for the six months preceding the beginning of the study, and also for the two yearly periods before that. So In essence, they completed the social readjustment rating scale for the past two and a half years. Finally, they completed the scale again at the end of the study. And then two different measures were taken of the participants to assess their psychological well-being. They firstly completed the Hopkins symptom checklist, which assesses symptoms such as anxiety and depression. And they also completed the Bradburn Morale Scale, which assesses positive and negative emotions. Um, Participants filled out these scales every month. Okay, so they were keeping tabs on uh, the participants on a monthly basis. Okay, and then what they found was that, first off, there were five most common daily hassles and also five most common uplifts. An uplift is something that is a positive thing, um, like getting on well with your partner, for example, or relating well to friends. That kind of thing is an uplift. Okay, So your most common hassles and uplifts are there on the left-hand side of the screen. In general, Kana found a significant positive correlation between hassle frequency and psychological symptoms at the start and at the end of the study for both men and women. So essentially, the more hassles the participants experienced, the more severe their psychological symptoms of depression and anxiety were, and the lower their morale was as well. Very importantly as well, for both men and women, hassles were a stronger predictor of psychological symptoms than life change. And so that's another very important part of this particular study, and that was true regardless of whether the life changes were measured over the two and a half years before the study, or the 10 months during the study, daily hassles were always more important in terms of psychological well-being than uh, than life changes were. Okay, so there's a nice key study for you to have there. Again, like the Ray study from life changes, this is a key study. It's an important study to remember, and it is the study that you should refer to should you get asked to outline a research study um, in the exam. Right, let's have a little look at some evaluation points then. There are three that we're going to go through, um, so here we go. Okay, so first off, I've got a little bit of research support for you. Um, So we have a study by John Ivanchevich from 1986, where the participants had to complete the hassles and uplift scale plus the schedule of recent experiences. Um, and they also conducted assessments on general health 
um, performance and absenteeism as well. And they found that daily hassles were a superior predictor of poor health, a superior predictor of poor job performance, and also a superior predictor for absenteeism from work compared to life changes. Okay, so it would seem, according to that particular piece of research, that the day in, day out stresses matter more than the significant life changes that we experience only rarely. Okay, now this study is only one study of a huge body of research uh, that suggests that daily hassles are more valid in terms of explanations of stress than life changes are, which obviously increases the credibility of this particular explanation for stress. Okay, moving on, we have a methodological issue, and that is the fact that most research is done retrospectively. So the way it works is that participants complete checklists by recalling the hassles they've experienced over, over a particular time period, such as the past month. Now, the usefulness of any data that relies on retrospective recall actually depends on how accurate the participants' memories are. That's fine, but it's particularly problematic in research into daily hassles, because Hassles such as losing keys, filling out annoying forms, being fed up with the weather, getting stuck in traffic, that kind of thing is difficult because such hassles are by definition minor. And anything that's minor, including a daily hassle, may very easily be forgotten. So the validity of hassles research is quite doubtful because the chances are that people actually underestimate the number of hassles that they've experienced over a time period because they've forgotten what hassles they've actually had and what they haven't had because of how trivial those hassles actually are. Okay, and then I have one more for you and that is a good old trusty correlation versus causation evaluation point. And that is that Hassel's research suffers from the same problems of drawing cause and effect conclusions as we saw in the case of life changes. Now, despite the consistent and significant correlations found between Hassel's and illness, we are not justified in claiming that Hassel's cause illness. And that's because, once again, another factor, for example, being depressed, may be causing both a tendency to report daily Hassel's and illnesses. Okay, now that is a weakness of Hassel's research because it doesn't allow us to draw conclusions about cause and effect. And that means that most Hassel's research can't actually give us answers about the direct effects of daily Hassel's on physical and psychological symptoms of illness. And that makes it difficult to judge how influential Hassel's actually are. Now, bear in mind that doesn't mean that the concept of daily Hassel's is invalid or irrelevant. But it does mean that the role of daily hassles appears to be quite indirect and also depends on many other more influential factors. So I've got all of those evaluation points for you um, as peel paragraphs so that you can note them down or have a little look at how they could be written in an essay or in an exam. And so I hope they've all made sense. Um, here they are written down for you. So you've got research support there, followed by the problem of retrospective data, and then topped off by the problem of correlational research. All right, that is the end of the video. I hope the outline and the evaluation sections have both made sense. And thank you very much for listening.